Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be talking about JavaScript arrays. So an array is basically a list of elements uh, and you, can, you have access to each element within the array and you can access it however you want. So in the past videos I've been um, using arrays but in this video I'll explain them a little more thoroughly and I'll talk about some common array functions that are built into JavaScript. Uh, so as you might have seen in some other videos, to declare an array you just use the um, uh, brackets and then within them you can put whatever elements you want. So in JavaScript you don't have to specify what type of elements will be in an array. You can just have various different elements. So you could have a number, you can have a string, you can have a boolean, and then you can even have another array. So one, two, three. So R is an array that holds various elements. And to access an element from an array you use the same brackets and now you specify the index. So array indexing um, in most programming languages actually starts with zero. So this is the zeroth element, this is the first element, this is the second element, and this whole array is the third element. So array of zero will give us 10, array of one will give us hello, etc. And this is why you may see uh, in a lot of challenges and tutorials online, to loop through an array you usually use a for loop and you do something like where i equals zero, i is less than the length of the array, and then i plus plus, and now to access each element you do r of i. And this works because i is being set to zero and it's looping from zero to one, two, three, four, etc. And every time um, the inner statements in this loop are executed, i represents a different number and this way you're accessing each element within the array. So array of zero, and then it's array of one, array of two, etc. Uh, so as in the strings video, I'll explain some common functions you have with arrays. So for example, as you just saw array length, and you get four. Uh, you can also get the length of some elements within the array. So for example, the third element in the array is, an, is another array. So now you can do array of three dot length. So if you want to see the length of this array, it's 3. And then you can do multiple, you can um, combine the indexes, the indices. So for example, here you're accessing third element, which is an array. And now if you want to access a certain element in this array, you would do array of 3, array of 0. And now, as you see here, you have 1, 2, 3. You'll get the first element, which is 1. Then you could do array 3 of 1, you get 2. Array three three you get, oops sorry array two array three two you get three and so on. Uh, then you have uh, you can join all of these elements using the join function, and you're going to join them. Uh, you're going to separate them with nothing. So if you run your code, they all just become combined. If you put a space, they be, they um, combine into a string with a space. Uh, you can add elements to the array, so array of push, and then you have array of pop. Oops. So these are two common functions uh, you'll use in arrays uh, often. So array of push, you can add an element to the end of the array, so a thousand. And then if you print array, you have ten, hello, true, one, two, three, and a thousand. And then if you do array of pop, it will remove that last element and now you're back where you started. So push adds an element to the end of the array here and pop removes that element from the end. Uh, then you can remove an element from the beginning of array, so array shift and return array. It removes the first element which was 10. Uh, you can also reverse an array, so array reverse, and this is a pretty useful function for the first challenge on Coderbyte to reverse a string so now the array is reversed. So if you wanted to actually reverse a string, you would do something like var of string equals hello world from earth. So the reverse function, as you just saw, operates on arrays. So what we need to do is convert this um, string to an array. So we use a split function. And now if we return string, we get Oh, actually, we'll, we'll set this um, split string to this variable r, and we print it, we have an array. So now we can actually reverse this array, so r reverse, 
And now if we print it, we get Earth from world hello. So we reversed it. And now you can join this um, reversed array back into a string and print it. So now we essentially just reverse the string. Uh, so yeah, so there's another function that's similar to the index of function for strings, and that's index of. So if we have an array, one, two, three, a hundred, you can do something like our index of, and it'll search for an element within the array, so three, and it will return two. So it's in the second position, the second index in the array. So zero, one, two, and here it is. Uh, so let's actually try and solve this current challenge using some of these array functions. So for vowel count, you want to count the number of vowels in a string. So for example, var string equals uh, hello coder byte. So the vowels here are e, o, so that's two, three, four, and five. So five. We're not going to count y as a vowel. So what we'll do is we'll create a new array with vowels. So a, e, a, e, i, o, and finally u. So we're going to have to let our program know what our, uh, what vowels are. So we're, it's one of these characters. So now what we'll do is we'll loop through the string, but first we'll uh, turn the string into an array. So there are equals string split, and we split it at, we'll split it at each character, so we don't actually put a space here. So if we print out array, we get, whoops, oh, I forgot to get, so vowels. So we have string, this R variable is the split string, so it turns it into an array, and we have a variable, um, an array of vowels. So now, R is equal to all of these characters. So what we'll do is we'll loop through this array. I equals zero, I is less than the length of the array. And we increase it. And now, so now let's store a count of how many vowels we have. So far we have zero. So if, so what we wanna do is check if the current letter, the current um, character is a vowel. So a vowel is one of these characters. So what we'll do now is if vowels index of, so we're gonna check if within this array exists the current character. So if the, in this array exists the character H, if in this array exists the character E, and so on. If it does, that means it is a vowel, and we add um, one to count. And then in the end, we return count. So, hello coder bytes returns 15. Whoops. Oh, I forgot to say, oh, so if vowels index of array of i doesn't equal negative 1. So, if an element doesn't exist in, array, in an array, it, it returns negative 1. So, now we get 5. So, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 vowels, so this is correct. So, this is an example of how to use some of the array functions to count the vowels in a string.